This is the second video in our little workshop series here, going from uh, our uh, analysis journey. Um, we've got 10x Cloud here from FastQs to Quantitative Biological Information. So previously we did an introduction. Now we're going to go in and we're going to do some analysis, starting with some raw data processing. Now in this uh, slide, I've got an introduction here. So this tutorial, uh, we're using the 10x Genomics Cloud Analysis Platform to do the raw data analysis for a set of human PBMCs, which I introduced in the previous video. Um, our intent here is to explore neutrophil maturation, and here's what our goals are for our workshop. The goals for our experiment are a little bit different, and I'll go back over those a little later, but the goals for our workshop here um, is to remind everybody that analysis begins with design. <clears throat> so just that the goals of the experiment will determine how the data should be processed and analyzed. Um, and interpreted ultimately. Today we're going to sign in and create a project uh, in our 10x Cloud uh, tool. And we're going to use our web-based FastQ uploader to learn how to upload FastQ files. We're going to create a new analysis. We're going to actually do a couple of them and we'll run some data analysis. And then we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to download the output files. So just as a backup and a reminder of what we talked about in the last video uh, is our uh, neutrophil analysis plan. So we had this slide there. These two that I've got uh, called out in yellow are the steps that we're going to address in this part of our analysis, so our raw data processing. We remember we talked about neutrophils have low UMI content. So we're going to use uh, the four cells parameter in uh, Cell Ranger on our cloud platform to uh, account for this. And then we also uh, talked about how neutrophils have high intron retention rates. So we're also going to make sure that we're mapping our reads to introns as well to make sure we have the best, uh, the best sensitivity that we can get. And that's, that's what I've got for these introductory slides. So now I'm just going to jump over to our website. So here is, uh, actually, let me go all the way back. Let me go all the way back. All right, so here's the 10X Genomics website. If you go into products, under software, you can find cloud analysis. So we go into cloud analysis, and this is the, the splash page for it. Uh, data analysis simplified, we're gonna sign up or sign in. Now, since I've recently signed in, it's uh, remembered that, so it signed me right in. When you sign in, what you're first gonna see is an option to sign in with Google or make a username and password. So you just click through that, um, and then it'll bring you to a page similar to this. Now, I do have uh, one thing on this page that isn't gonna be there for, for you when you first sign up, and is this, this project. You start out with no projects, but that's not a problem. I'll show you how to create projects. And this is here just to speed things along in our, uh, in our, in our workshop here. So we'll get to this later. It's just some pre-baked data. So we're going to jump right in. Um, I feel like the interface is, is pretty intuitive. On the left-hand side, you'll have uh, your username. It'll say Cloud Analysis. You've got your projects. A few other uh, useful links here that we'll uh, tap, tap on a little bit later. Um, and then we've got, this is your project space. Most things center around projects in, in Cloud. So we're going to create a new project. Now we click on this button, it gives us a couple of options. So we have a project name. Um, and for this part of the workshop, we're just going to practice uploading a tiny set of FastQ files. They're available on the, on the, on the page where this uh, workshop is housed. You can catch the download link there um, to get these things if you want to practice with me. Or you can do it with your real data. Um, in a little bit, either way. So we're gonna name this, we need to give it a project name. So we're gonna call this, um, I'm just gonna call this beta spade, and we'll go fastq uploading, um, cause that's what we're doing. You haven't, so the name's required, but a description's optional. Um, descriptions can often be quite helpful, especially when you start getting a lot of projects um, and you start, uh, your names may not be quite as unique, Here's the opportunity to help you really figure out what you've done later. So this is helping your future self. So this, what I'm going to say here is we're going to go learning to upload FASTQ files. Uh, these 
files are too small for meaningful analysis. So this, what this tells me or what this helps me do, or at least what's going to help my future self do is when I come across this project later, recognize that this was just for fast queue uploading. And why was I doing it? Well, it was just practice and that these are little files. So don't bother doing analysis on it. So I'm going to create this project. And then now that I've created a project, um, it automatically will take me to fast uploading. Now, the reason it does this is because it knows that in order to do anything, you need to upload your, your data. So here we're going to do, uh, I'm going to click on this button here, uh, upload fast queue files. And this opens this little box that allows me to choose an upload method. We got a couple of options. We can click and we can browse on our, on our system. Um, I could also use the command line interface if I wanted to as well. There's instructions for this on the website. I'm not going to get into this workshop, but this is another good option. Um, and I can also drag and drop. So that I think is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull this back a little bit and I'm going to grab this folder here for my tiny gene expression. And I'm going to drag it into here. And what it's going to show me first is a preview of what's in that folder. Let me pull this back over to here. And then <clears throat> I'll explain a little bit of what's going on here. So I've got two sets of FASTQ files in here. They're, this one's in groups of three because I have this I1, R2, and R1. So this is an index read, and this is read one off of our sequencing machine and read two off our sequencing machine. This one was run on lane two. Well, actually, we got a there. It's, it's actually kind of funny, the index for... Anyway, if you look through these, you can see there's two different lanes here. One's lane two, uh, one's lane one. They're actually a little bit of out of order here, but that's not a big deal because as we upload these, um, cloud our cloud platform is going to sort these into the correct order for us and group these into groups of FASTQ files. So I'm just going to hit start upload, and that's going to start uploading these things. And I'll show you exactly what I was talking about in a second. Now, these are pretty small, and I did that on purpose, so this wouldn't take forever. But what it does give you, this upload manager, it gives you a way to track what's going on. It gives you what's being uploaded, how long it's taking, how long it's expected to take, and you can keep an eye on your, your, your upload as you go through this. So now we're there. Um, everything says it's uploaded. We're going to, we're going to, we got this little green upload successfully completed, and then we're just going to X out of here. So like I said, we had two sets of files, one from lane one, one from lane two. They're both coming from the exact same library. They were just ran on two different lanes. So we actually do want to include both of those sets of FASTQ files in the analysis that we're going to do. So we can see here, we also had, this tells us that there are three files here. We've got an I file for the index, R1, R2, I file, R1, R2. And then the next thing that we need to do before we can create an analysis, which we're not going to do for these because I already told you that these are too small to worry about. Uh, we didn't just select library type because that's going to let cloud know what options to give you for pipelines when it comes time to choose that. So if we cl click these, I'm just going to call them single cell three prime gene expression. And then that's pretty much there uh, with what you need to do for uploading FASTQ files. So we have, we've uploaded, we got our FASTQ files here. The next step would be to create an analysis. But like I said, we're not going to do that in this one. We're going to go over to, uh, we're going to go back to our projects. And then here is this project. So I'm going to go to this one. And this is our Neutrophils workshop project. Now, the, the fast cues for this are linked out to on the, on the main page for this workshop. So you could grab the fast cues for the Neutrophils and upload those. The reason I didn't do it live in, in this setting was because it takes a while to upload those fast cue files, depending on your connection. And I didn't want to, didn't want to have to spend a lot of time here or edit a lot of video. So we've got two sets of fast cue files. Uh, just like we had before, um, two different lanes, but it's the same library. We have I1, I2, R1, and R2. The reason we have the two I files is because this was a dual index library. The other one was a single index library. 
So either one's fine. And, and as, as well, um, the I files aren't required for analysis. So you only really need to upload R1 and R2 um, if, that's, if you want to save some time. Or if that's all you were given, some service providers, some sequencing providers will only provide R1 and R2. And that's just fine. That's all you need for the three prime gene expression analysis. Uh, for some of our other assays, that's not the case. But for this one, we're good with just R1 and R2. These are three prime gene expression uh, libraries. So I've already marked those. And what we're going to do now is we need to select the fast cues we want to include in our analysis. This box here will select everything because that's what we want to do. Um, there are some situations where maybe you don't want that. Maybe you just want to select one of your sets of fast cues. Um, you can also do that, but I'm going to get them both because they both came from the same library and they're required to get up to the, the level of sequencing we wanted for this project. So now that I've selected this, this create new analysis button <clears throat> has become active. So I'm going to click on here and I am going to create a, uh, a new analysis. Now, uh, let's see what we're analyzing. It lets us know we got a couple of fast Q sets. Uh, we're going to choose a uh, pipeline. We're going to use Cell Ranger 7.0.1 for that one. As of the time we're recording, it's the most recent uh, pipeline on here. Our analysis name, this is another one that's required. So I'm going to call this Neutrophil Maturation uh, Exploration. And then I'm going to say default. And I'm going to say default because I always recommend running um, pipelines, anything new, with their default parameters to begin with, because that can give you a baseline and let you know what you can change later. Um, as a spoiler, I already told you guys that we're going to make some changes. But for this one, I just want to run it as a default. And then these default uh, runs will also be used in one of the later videos when we're comparing uh, web summaries, doing some quality uh, quality assessment stuff. And then at that point, we'll also show you exactly how we came to the conclusion that we needed to modify some parameters. But for now, we're going to run these things. Okay, So we got this uh, ex exploration default, a description. Again, this can save you some, some time later. So I'm going to say using a PBMC data set for uh, Save myself the typing and then just copy paste that. And I think that's pretty good. We do need to choose a reference now. So these are human PBMCs. So we're going to choose human. Mentioned before, uh, including intronic reads is something that we do want to do for this data set. Um, it's default in Cell Ranger 7 then Cell Ranger 7. So we're just going to leave that default on. It's fine. There's some advanced settings that I'll talk about later, but at this point we're ready to run our analysis. So I'm just going to click run analysis and that's going to get our analysis started. It gives us our name of our analysis. It gives us the opportunity to view the settings of what we of what we did in that analysis. And then we also tells us it's going to email us when it's done, which is great. So then now it says you can go back to the project. So we're going to go back to the project. Now in this project, I've on our analysis tab. So we started with fast queues, then we went create a new analysis, and then now it brings us to our analysis tab. You can see that I've got a couple of them that are pre-existing. So these are pre-baked runs that uh, that we're going to use in a couple minutes. But here's the one that just started. Now, we have some additional information. We have our status, says it's in progress. Um, it'll give us processing time in a little bit. You know, we just barely started this thing, so it hasn't had time to populate that one yet. So we'll get processing time, date submitted, the pipeline that was used. And then if we click into it, we can go back to this, uh, to this, set, to this, uh, this page here. Again, view our settings, uh, whatever we want to do, right? So now let's go back to our analyses. We can do that by up here at the top, or there's a number of different ways to get here. Now let's uh, let's go back to our fastq files, and now let's do a run where we do modify those default parameters. So in this one, we're gonna select both fastq files again. 
we're going to create a new analysis just like we did before. Our analysis name is we've got, actually, I think it's probably still in the clipboard, neutrophil maturation exploration. Instead of default, we're going to call this custom. And in our description, we're going to say uh, the custom change was to the force cells parameter. Do some spelling fixing. I'm actually a really miserable speller. Um, and I have a tendency to not pay attention when I'm typing. So anyway, here we go. So this, this we had a little bit of description that tells us what the change was. This felt reasonably uh, descriptive, so I'm okay with this one. Uh, our transcriptome reference. Again, we're going to do human. We're not going to make a ton of changes because you don't want to make too many changes at the same time. But anyway, we're still including intron reads. We're going to go to our advanced settings. There's a number of things that we can do here. Um, is a uh, number of parameters we can change. The one we're going to change is four cells. And in there, we're going to put the number 8,000. Uh, and you'll see where we got this number from when uh, in one of the later videos when we talk about when we go through QA and we make some comparisons between our default when we start really looking close at our default run. Okay, so we made that. There's a lot of other things that you can do that we're not going to we're not going to change, but we are going to now run the analysis. So we're going to hit that button. Again, we get the same same thing allows us to view our settings. Here we can see that we have it lets us know that we did set four cells equal to 8000. So that's good. Um, and then we're going to go back to our analysis. Uh, you can see this this uh, one we started a, a few minutes ago is updated now. It's been processing for three minutes. Um, these two data sets, these two runs are from this exact same data set. So we can expect about the same processing time. So what I want to do now is go into one of these runs that has finished. So we can go into, um, Let's see. Oh, this is funny. Yeah. So I misspelled this one. I've got customer parameters rather than custom uh, parameters. Um, one thing that I have learned doing computational stuff, especially in coding and things like that, you don't have to spell it correctly. You just have to spell it the same each time. So anyway, I'm probably not going to bother re-recording this one. We'll just roll with it. Uh, OK, so we got our pre-baked customer parameters run. Uh, we have we can look at our results summary, which we'll do in a little bit. This takes us to our web summary. And then down here, we have a number of output files. We've got a loop browser file, which is one that we're going to want to download for for later in our in our workshop when we go through the loop portion of it. Um, and then we got a few other a few other things. Um, things like right now we've got our BAM file. This is one I want to draw your attention to because we're going to use this one later in our uh, in our tutorial as well when we do our velocity analysis. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. You can download everything if you want it by clicking that, or you can pick and choose. So if I did this and hit download with, uh, I'm going to download it with the browser, and that's just going to start downloading it here. And it's see it's already there. Um, that was a quick one. Uh, one more thing I will bring up is that uh, over here we have some open support docs. Uh, here's some on additional online documentation for cloud analysis. And this, uh, this can be very helpful. I mean, for example, um, one of the things we didn't do in this tutorial was use a custom reference. We used, we used one of our pre-built references. So if you wanted to, if you had a custom reference that was either, um, a uh, species that's not human or mouse, or maybe it is human and mouse, but you've added something like uh, GFP or some other marker that you're interested in looking at. Uh, you can upload that reference. And by going here, you can find information and instructions on getting these things uh, uploaded to cloud so that you can use it. And that is, uh, that's the end of this section. Thanks for bearing with me. Um, and happy, happy analyzing as you go through. Uh, and play around with 10x data and hope you really enjoy 10x cloud. And then, yeah, so see you in the next, uh, the next video.